Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us today. My Bible is in front of me, open to the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel in chapter 22, if you can, reach over and turn in your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 22. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. This one's entitled, Peace and Terminal Illness peace in terminal illness. It was written by our founder, and I'll explain why I want to put this track into your hands here in just a moment. But for right now, let me kind of lay some groundwork for our time here in Ezekiel chapter 22. Now, friend, rarely do I just jump into a Bible passage and pick out one verse to preach on it. And when I do preach on one verse, I really try to take the time to help the listener know why that verse comes in the passage when it does. I'm looking at one verse here out of Ezekiel 22 today, and it's a rather famous verse, especially at missions conference and those kind of things. It's a verse where God says that he sought for a man to stand in the gap. I want to ask some questions about the verse between today and tomorrow, questions like these, who, what, when, where, and why? Now, to begin to achieve the goal of understanding why God sought for a man, I want to first today give us something of the big picture here of the book of Ezekiel. So let me ask you, friend, how much do you already know about the prophet Ezekiel and his book? Well, let's get the big picture view today. So get your Bible and something in which you can jot some notes We want to answer why you and I need to have the book of Ezekiel in our Bibles today. In a moment, I'll be reading verse 30 there of Ezekiel chapter 22. But right now, I want you to think with me about gospel tracts. Do you know what a gospel tract is? The word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to put into your hand a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. That's about 41 different tracts, and each one tells the same gospel message but comes at it from a little different vantage point. The one in my hand right now, I already gave the title to it, but again, it's Peace in Terminal Illness. Now, this track was written by our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, and he had cancer. As a matter of fact, listen to how this track begins. It says, on June 29, 1995, a doctor said to me, you have cancer. It has spread to your spine and ribs. So I know how you feel if you have a terminal illness. No one's prepared to receive that kind of report. At first, the news is so shocking you can't realize the full meaning of it. You walk out of the doctor's office in a daze. It's devastating unless unless you know that when you leave this life, you'll go straight to heaven. Now, that's how the track begins. This track, Peace and Terminal Illness, was written by a man who had peace in terminal illness. And yes, it was his cancer that took him, but he died with a joyfulness, not because he had the cancer, but because he was going to be with Christ, his Savior. He was soul assured of that. S-O-U-L, soul assured. Do you have assurance in your soul that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven? Well, you need these gospel tracks. Because if you already have that, then you need to give it to somebody else who doesn't have soul assurance. But friend, if you do not have assurance in your soul that if you were to die today and you'd go to heaven, then you need to read these tracts. Please get them from us. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give our contact information. For 80 years, we've been publishing gospel tracts and giving them away all over the world. Please 
please let me send it to you. Give us your name and address. We'll send the sample packet. It's free in the next business day's mail. This one, peace and terminal illness will be in there. Be ready with pen and paper in hand when my announcer gives the contact information or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, I've got one verse in front of me here. My Bible's open to Ezekiel 22, verse 30 says this, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. You're probably used to the fact that in the New Testament gospel books, if you have a red letter edition, all the words of Jesus are there in red. If that were going to be true in the Old Testament, these words would be in red. These are the words out of the mouth of Jehovah. It's a great text of scripture. This verse is often preached as a standalone verse, and you and I understand why. God was, during Ezekiel's day, seeking for somebody to stand in the gap. This was about 600 years before Jesus was born, and God has always loved working through just one person to accomplish even national goals. He sought and found Noah, didn't he? He found Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Samuel, David, and the list could go on. During the days of Ezekiel, there was another prophet who was standing in the gap. His name was Daniel. Now, We need to talk about this book of Ezekiel for a moment. Ezekiel, the prophet, had one basic assignment, one basic assignment. His assignment was this, to be a watchman on the wall. You'll find that in chapter 3 and in chapter 33, the watchman on a wall. Now, a watchman gives a warning. He's there to be a warning to the people of impending trouble, and that's exactly what Ezekiel is doing. The basic message of Ezekiel is this, God must judge the nation of Judah and particularly the city of Jerusalem, its capital. Their disobedience was so deeply entrenched in the nation that it had to go into captivity. And Ezekiel told them that this chastening from God, this captivity was a chastening that was going to be a tool that would draw them back from their apostasy against God. Ezekiel also told them, though, that God would be faithful to them and bring them back to their land, but they would return with very humble hearts. God resists the proud, but he does what? He gives grace to the humble. I think, and so do most people think, that the key verses for the book of Ezekiel are found over in chapter 36, verses 24 through 26. I have them in front of me. Let me read you parts of those verses. Ezekiel 36, beginning at verse 24, the Bible says this, I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. I'm skipping on now uh, to another part of verse 25. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. End quote there. Now, Ezekiel, believe it or not, was a street preacher. He preached almost exclusively to either individuals or very small groups of people. He preached a lot, by the way, using visual aids. He is, well, you may call him one of the first multimedia preachers. He preached some strange kinds of sermons using visual aids. If you have your notepad handy, jot down the three basic parts to the book of Ezekiel. There's 48 chapters, but there's three basic sections. Here they are. Chapters 1 through 24, these are the messages before Jerusalem fell into captivity. That's chapters 1 to 24, the messages before Jerusalem fell. Those messages are about catastrophe was coming. Notice the C word, catastrophe. The second section is verses 20, uh, chapters 25 to 32. Chapters 25 to 32, these are the messages during the siege of Jerusalem. These are messages of condemnation, particularly on some Gentile nations. Then the last section, chapters 33 to 48, these are Ezekiel's sermons 
after the fall of Jerusalem, and these tend to be messages of comfort and hope for the future of the people. Now, let me bring us, though, back to chapter 22. This is one of the final sermons of Ezekiel before the Babylonian army was to put a siege on Jerusalem to starve them into surrender and submission. Chapter 22 opens with a declaration of Judah, the nation, Judah's guiltiness before God. Look at verse 3 of your Bibles open. It says this, Thus saith the Lord, the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it. Well, their condemnation is laid out in verses 1 to 5 in chapter 22. But then in verses 6 through 12 of the chapter, their crimes are listed there. And there you're going to find that the poor people were oppressed. And there were some really vulgar sexual sins being committed. And then lastly, the consequences of all this was told in verses 13 through 16. God would scatter the Jews and make them universally mocked and despised among the nations, all because they turned their back on God. Yet, here in the midst of this full-blown wickedness, what's God doing? God is, according to verse 30, seeking for just one person. In the plan and power of God, one person can make a mighty difference for God in the lives of people, in the lives of a nation. Now, remember, Ezekiel was one man. He was making an impact. Daniel was one man. He was certainly having an impact. They were making a difference to the people around them. Daniel, to the upper ups in political life, Ezekiel to the average everyday person. Now, believer, friend, the world of Ezekiel's day was a mess, yet God in grace and mercy was willing to work a work in that day, so God sought for somebody, someone not with a family pedigree, not with an educational background, just, well, somebody not with a whole lot of talent. No, God was just looking for a person with one singular trait. God looked for a person willing to stand for him, and by standing be part of a wall, a hedge, verse 30 says, a barrier to stop people from the peril that was coming. Well, let me ask, will you and I be just that? Will you and I stand in the gap for a lost soul today? Hell, the lake of fire is a horrible peril for people to face you and I need to stand, if you and I know Christ, need to stand for God in the life of somebody today because a horrible peril is coming. But will we stand? I, I think you and I call that today being gospel tellers, loving people enough to tell them, to be a watchman on the wall for them and say, your sin has made you an enemy of God, but God loves you. You're on your way to a place of great torment, but you need not go there. There's another opportunity. There's another place to go. It's a place of glory, grace, and peace. It's a place called heaven. God is there and peace is there and it lasts forever. But you must have Jesus Christ. He's the key. He's the door to heaven. You must receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, if you've never done that, do that right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.